Today at the Bien Canary Zone, we would like to take this time to honor a Juventus legend. Ciao, Bien Canary. Welcome back to the Bien Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today is Friday, June 18th, 2021. And before we get into today's news and rundown, uh, please go ahead and like and, and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, so today, to start off, we want to honor uh, the loss of Jean Piero Bonaparte. He um, he passed away la late last night or early this morning, I guess, depending on where you are from. Um, but I just want to take a few moments to go over uh, what he meant to the club. And um, he passed, I believe he was 92 years old. Um, so he had a long lived life and he uh, accomplished a lot with the Juventus program. Um, and he touched many, uh, many individuals. And he's one of the reasons why a lot of people are fans today. Um, so just going off, I'm going to read a little bit. And I apologize. I know um, that's an issue with people like with me reading straight off. But uh, there's some stats and stuff I want to go over that I, do, I personally don't have memorized. Um, he was before my time. Um, but that doesn't lessen his um, importance to Juventus. So Gian Piero, uh, Gian Piero Bonaparte, uh, Bonaparte played for Juventus for 15 years from 1946 to 1961. He appeared in 459 games for the club, the first ever player to do so and play that many matches until uh, until recently, honestly. Um, he said one match would have been enough for me to be happy forever. I'm sure of that. It went even better. <laughs> Uh, Bonaparte exemplified from the beginning what it meant to be a Juventus legend, spurning offers from Inter, Milan, Rome, and Torino, and only wearing one shirt for his entire career. Um, Bonaparte excelled in his position as a center forward and was the number nine Juventus craves to have today, honestly. Uh, journalists of the day described him as a playmaker with very clear ideas. Uh, he directs, he, uh, they say that he um, has very clear ideas and he directs the traffic and stated that he shot quickly and hit the ball with both feet. Um, we know today some people, <laughs> some very um, struggle to do that uh, today. Uh, Bono Banti, he scored 178 goals with Juventus and won the Scudetto five times. Uh, yeah, won uh, five Scudetti and won two Coppa Italia. Um, he also won the Capo Caninetti, uh scoring 27 goals in the 1947-1948 season. So definitely a decorated uh, individual for Juventus, uh, one of the er early greats uh, for the club. Um, I believe he also, I think it was, I'm not sure if this was the last one, but I know he ended up um, scoring the uh, Tenth, or winning the tenth uh, Scudetto with the club. Uh, after retirement, he would go on to be appointed as a director in the club's management. Later, ascending to chairman of the board in 1981, a position he held until the year of my birth in 1990. That's when he stepped away from that. But I believe he continued on through his life, being an honorary member of the board. Um, and then uh, the uh, just so an update, I think they announced just recently within the last few minutes ago that, uh, of course, as I post this, it may be a little bit longer than that, but that the Italian national team will wear a black armband to honor Bonaparte and his loss, um, and to mourn his loss in the upcoming match against Wales on Sunday. So it's a really cool meaning, uh, really cool for him to do. I think he also scored, I want to say during his career, this is offhand, so I apologize, but I believe he had eight goals uh, with the Italian national team, and uh, I think in one of the uh, matches he, uh, he played in against uh, England, uh, one of the uh, coaches said something along the lines of, if I had 11 Bonaparte, I'd have a winning squad or something like that. Or, you know, I could win anything. Um, so pretty high praise from anybody. Uh, so going on, uh, basically what I take from this is that Bonaparte is a Juventus legend and will always be remembered as such. Uh, he was Alessandro Del Piero before Del Piero was even born. Um, he was to many fans what Gianluigi Buffon and Del Piero are to me. He's their, he's their golden standard for what Juventus should be. Um, so to me, that's just such a cool thing. Um, so anyway, I just want to take today just to honor and to mourn um, his passing and what he meant to Juventus. Without him, we wouldn't have Juventus what it is today. So just want to take a few moments of the day, just some with calm collection, just to reflect on his life, appreciation for his life, um, and send you know my thoughts and prayers for his loved ones and with the Juventus program. Um, so going on those lines, who could be the next Bonaparte figure for Juventus? Uh, 
Uh, I don't know how much of a, how good of a segue that was, but uh, we'll go on to the, the short news that we really had today after that. But uh, my idea for who that could be would be um, Manuel Locatelli. You've heard his name over and over and over again. It's not going to stop. Uh, Gazzetta della Sport is saying that Sassuolo wanted to wait until the end of the Euro before entertaining talks for Locatelli. The club was hoping more teams would come forward for him and maybe push the price up to 50 million euros. Um a lot of what we do here when we talk about the news is we like to give our opinions, and that's a big part. Um, my personal opinion is 50 million euros is going to be way too much unless he's doing, unless he has the performance that he had um, on Wednesday every single match. 50 million euros is, seems a bit absurd. Um, I still think, you know, if you're going to go up 45 is probably to me the highest that I would say, but I also am convicted that Juventus needs to get this deal done. He wants Juventus. He only wants Juventus. Um, yes, he's probably open to entertaining, making that money other places. He can, and I think Locatelli is one of those prospects that's definitely able to perform at a high level wherever he may go. But what Juventus needs is a high-level midfielder, and that's what they're getting with Locatelli. Um I think, but I think definitely for Locatelli to shine, he'll definitely need a counterpart that can mount him. I don't know if they need a star like Pogba, but I, I mean, yes, I would, I would say, well, I might say yes. If they could land, you know, Romeo Gresti a long time ago said the combination of Pogba and Locatelli, to me, I think the sky's the limit when it comes to Juventus and their future and their, um, what they can, what they can win for the club. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on Locatelli. As you know, it's just a daily occurrence. What's going on? What's what's happening? Um, maybe we will be waiting until the end of the Euros before we find anything else out. It seems a high possibility at this point. Um, I I I don't know that I get worried yet as it you know as it trails on, just because um, with the other clubs right now. If it weren't for Logatelli wanting Juventus, be growing up a Juventus fan, his brother's a Juventus fan. He talked about it the other day. Um, you know, if it weren't for that fact, I'd be a lot more nervous right now because I could easily see some of these bigger clubs, European, uh, not European, um, what's it called, Premier League money coming in to sway him. But we'll see. We'll just keep an eye on it. We'll just keep updating every single day. It's basically look at Telly Watch. Um, and then uh, another news, um, Gazette of the Sport is saying that um, – Aaron Ramsey, um, or he has high interest from West Ham and Crystal Palace, but the wages remain a problem for him. So it's just, um, it's just continue to watch. What's the, how quick can we get him out of here? Um, from this point, he may have to lower his wages. Especially, it depends what's important to Ramsey. Is it all? Is it is it the money or is it playing time? So we'll see. We'll just keep monitoring that from where it goes. Um, Hopefully, Ramsey will be able to work out something. I know it was also reported that he really wants to go back to Arsenal. Don't know how high of a priority he is, or even if he is uh, wanted back by Arsenal. And then uh, Nicolo Shira is reporting that Carlo uh, Pensilio, Pensolio is set to uh, extend his contract with Juventus until uh, 2022, which to me, I think it's a that's great. I, you know, Pensolio is one of those players that I love having him in this player. He brings up, he brings so much to the club just on the bench. And that's where he remains all the times on the bench, but the relationships he establishes with our top players, um, even with Ronaldo the last couple of years have been to me, I think um, important and I've really done a lot for the club. So I'd love to see him remain with the club as long as he can, especially as, you know, that third goalkeeper role. Um, and then another story that we had going on was just a little last little bit. Uh, Marco Van Basten, a uh, Netherlands um, for player uh, coach, all that um, had some choice words for Matthias De Ligt. He said that De Ligt is a central defender. He has to lead a lot more, but he goes after his after his man and leaves a gaping hole in the defense. He went to Italy to learn how to how to defend, but I don't think he learned much there. So pretty scathing words for not only for De Ligt, but also for Italian uh, football uh, with that statement. But Delict had a response saying he gave me a compliment and a bit of criticism. I'm happy with this because that means I can again improve myself. If Mr. Van Basten says so, I can only be good. I guess <laughs> I love the I guess at the end there. Um, I think Delict just showed that how he's a consummate professional when he responded to this. I and mean, what else are you gonna say? Um, I don't know that it was a. I think uh, I don't know that it was a necessary comment by Van Basten to say that. I don't know um, what triggered this. Um, but as it stands, I'm proud again, proud that, um, Delict 
wears the Juventus colors. And then he's a representation of what this club is um, over somebody like that who would just, you know, throwing out those harsh comments. I don't know. Again, I need to know more of the circumstances surrounding it. I tried to look. I know it was an interview with um, – it was uh, NOS Sports, so maybe I'll go back and rewatch that and see what they said. But I'm very proud of the way uh, Delic responded to those comments. Anyway, that was it. That's a bit of a short news day, really. Not a lot going on, but the big story of the day was uh, just covering about, um, you know, uh, Boniperto's um, passing and what he meant to the club. Uh, check with us in. T- uh, check in with us tomorrow. As we go over all things Juventus, hopefully we'll have some more news coming up as well as covering uh, the Euros as they continue on and maybe Locatelli's performance there. Uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the videos. It really helps our channel grow. And uh, please uh, go ahead and hit that bell icon as well. That way it keeps you up to date as soon as we drop a video. So that way you're getting the news as fresh as it can, as it is. Um, follow Bianca and Arizona at Bianca and Arizona on Twitter and Instagram. And follow me at Justin Sofro on Twitter. Forza Juve. Forza Giampero. And Forza Azuri.